Hello, I'm Ollie, and um, so's this, actually, the Citroen Ollie, a new concept car on a mission not only to make design studies relevant again, but to answer every single awkward question you could possibly have about the electric revolution. Concept cars are usually static models so fragile they'll collapse in a heap if you blink too hard in their general direction. They're revealed, they get toured around a few posh parties, and then they end up stuffed in a shipping container out the back of the factory. The Ollie is different. It's here to answer your anxieties. So what are you worried about with electric cars? Let me think. It's how heavy is it? How many precious metals need to be mined to make up the battery? What does it all cost? What's the range? And then how much of it can be recycled when you've finished with it? These are the things that need answering if the electric revolution is gonna continue without stalling. In fact, let me read you something from Citroen themselves about how they pitched this car, because it's not often that a big grown-up corporation gets this punchy in a press statement. <clears throat> and I quote, rather than being a two and a half ton palace on wheels filled with screens and gadgets, Ollie proves that you can do more with less. I um, couldn't agree more. And while Mercedes, Audi and BMW cool off from that burn, let me show you around. The Ollie is basically a small crossover, about the same size as the best-selling Ford Puma, but it looks tougher and chunkier because so many of the panels are flat. So let's kick off with these black body panels, the bonnet, the roof, and the load bay. Oh yes, it's a pickup truck. They're all made from a sandwich of cardboard. It's been sprayed with a kind of hard setting polyurethane that makes it waterproof, and you end up with a material that's half the weight of steel, but similar strength and completely recyclable. All that Amazon packaging had to come in handy eventually. The same keep it simple approach applies to the completely vertical and upright windscreen. And that's because, well, a flat windscreen uses less glass than a longer raked one. But already you're thinking, oh dear, I bet the aerodynamics are absolutely awful. So Citroen's built in some ducts here, which jettison air over the top of the car and improve the aerodynamics. But still, you've got to think this is a city car. It belongs in a town. And when you're just popping to the shops, you don't need a super slippery drag coefficient. What else? Well, the front and rear bumpers are completely interchangeable. So are the front doors. They're copies of one another. That's an idea we first saw on the Citroen Ami city car. And identical doors are easier to produce and easy to fit at the factory. And they're cheaper to replace when you crash it. Plus, 50% of what you're looking at here used to be something else because half of an Ollie is designed to be built from recycled materials, but that's nothing compared to the end of the car's life when 100%, the entire car, Citroen says, is completely recyclable. Some of the weight and complexity shortcuts might end up annoying you. There's no speakers in the doors and the soundproofing's been reduced too because that saves 1.7 kilos per side. I guess you have to ask yourself, given EVs are quiet anyway, do you need to lug around all that insulation? Right, should we keep on nerding out? I could do it all day. Open up this door, then look at the back door here. Look at the size of the glass. I hate cars that have got terrible visibility. So Citroen have thought of that. Nice big glass panel, so the children back here can see out and it lets the light in. It's just so much more welcoming than all those German SUVs with their sporty, narrow glass and the visibility of a Tiger tank. Even the lights just scream simplicity, don't they? No noodly spaghetti heap of LEDs, just two horizontal lines and one vertical one. So hopefully you won't need an engineering doctorate and a mortgage to replace the whole cluster. I love so much of the thinking about this car, but I do just have one worry. We've been here before with Citroen and they bottled it. Do you remember the C4 Cactus from a few years ago? Really clever, lightweight, little city car with those funny little air bumps, that bubble wrap on the doors to stop you getting parking dings. Came out, we loved it. And then when they facelifted the car, so much of the design cleverness just went away. I really don't want that to happen 
to Ollie. Don't misunderstand the point of the Ollie here. This is not going to be on sale in a year's time once Citroen's bolted on some better windscreen wipers and fitted a parking camera. This is about changing attitudes, asking customers and car makers what their priorities are and what you might be willing to sacrifice. Par exemple, the battery. See, because the charging networks are still pretty ropey and only about half of people have the space to charge at home, most electric cars have to have massive batteries to give you a fighting chance of getting home when it's a bit cold. I mean, even a sensible family hatchback like a VW ID3 has a 77 kilowatt hour battery. And if you go the other way and get a teeny little city car like a Honda E, you have a 35 kilowatt hour battery, which gives it a range of about 10 yards going downhill with a tailwind. The Ollie's claim is 248 miles on only a 40 kilowatt hour battery. That is witchcraft. Actually, it's just physics. It's a single motor rather than having four-wheel drive, which reduces friction, and the car only weighs about a ton. In fact, it's around 440 kilograms lighter than a Mini Electric, which has half of the range. And right now you're thinking, why are you bothering to give the claimed range of a concept car? That's like deciding what wallpaper you want in a base on Mars. So what? It doesn't exist yet. What's the point? I mean, no one actually drives a concept car, do they? But Ollie does. That's why he's TopGear.com's electric concept car of the year. It's not just about having all the right ideas, it's about being able to actually drive on public roads so you can show them to the world. Ollie, meet Birmingham. Okay, now we are out and about inside Ollie. That sounds weird. Um, I can tell you about the thing I really, really like. Among all the clever thinking on this car, I think the highlight might be the interior design. You see, it bucks that trend that we've had from electric cars recently of who can build the biggest, baddest, most distracting touchscreen. It's been an arms race, hasn't it, between BMW and Tesla and Audi and Mercedes with the hyperscreen, but not in the Ollie. See, when you look at a shot of the interior, it doesn't have a massive touchscreen. You might have heard in the news about all these pesky semiconductor chips that there's a big shortage of at the moment. It's holding up everyone's new cars getting built, doesn't it? Well, the Ollie doesn't need many of them. So you're thinking, fine, but what about if I want to listen to some music or the radio or use the sat-nav? How do I have any of the modern functions I've become used to? Well, you simply slot in your normal smartphone into the dashboard and the car uses its semiconductors and its computing power to beam whatever function you need onto a screen at the top of the dashboard that's well out of your reach. Anything else you've got lying about inside besides your phone that's cleverly plugged into the dashboard just gets slung straight onto this shelf that's got a forest of golf tees growing in it. It's a brilliant idea. I mean, it just stops everything rattling around. So the centerpiece of the Ollie's interior ends up being the big, chunky climate control buttons. And you might think, oh dear, it all sounds very stripped out in there, Ollie. It sounds very, well, cheap and lacking in features, but I don't think so. It actually feels really homely in here and actually kind of welcoming. I mean, partly that's just the colour scheme, isn't it? But also these 3D printed seat backs, they're very comfortable. You sit on simple cushions, but they're nice and squidgy. And even the seats themselves ride on their own little air pockets, which are designed to absorb the jolt from a pothole. And because you're not encouraged to kind of door handle it through the corners, the tyres can be designed for more sensible pursuits, like lasting a really, really long time. Citroen reckons these good years could last half a million kilometres, which is about 310,000 miles, the entire lifetime of the car, in other words. I mean, at this rate, the poor old Michelin man's going to end up on the dole. You see, there's just lots and lots of clever thinking that adds up to the kind of car that would make life in a city a little bit less stressful. 
So is it fast? No, the top speed's limited to 68 miles an hour, so even a short hop on a motorway would be way out of Ollie's comfort zone. But, and I, I really hope you're getting Citroen's point here, this isn't a car that's designed for the motorway. It's a four-wheeled reminder that all cars, especially small ones, are massively over-engineered for what most people actually use them for. That means more weight, more cost, more pollution, and more complication. So for doing the town commute, the Ollie is easily rapid enough to boss some Ubers about. Now that motor shows are dead in the water, I wondered if concept cars might cease to exist as well, but the Ollie, it's the most refreshing design study in ages because it proves you can push the boundaries just by keeping things simple, by using some common sense. So, car industry, let's have a lot more thinking like this, please, because the EV revolution, it needs to apply to everyone. <laughs>